Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a series looking at some big boys toys and in this particular one we're going to be talking about what I did with an awful lot of help from a team at 3DXR but more about that in a moment. Now the S900 uh, is not a modern frame at all, it's really discontinued um, but it was quite popular for a while. It was one of the first generation of DJI frames that had retractable landing gear, it came with a gimbal at the bottom, it came with one of their very first generation flight controllers which was the A2 Wugong M flight controller system. Uh, to be honest it wasn't particularly brilliant. Um, it has that Zenmuse gimbal underneath and has some other bits and pieces as well. Talking about a flight time of about 18 minutes but that's if you are keeping it ultra light. Now this particular S900 has had a pretty torrid time of it. And I need to give a massive thank you to a gentleman called Chris, who's one of my Patreons. Now, Chris inherited this from his friend. His friend bought it, built it, tried to fly it, and on the first flight, it tipped over in the grass, which is why in this video, you can actually see lots of muck on the end of the propellers. And at that point, he started to lose an awful lot of confidence in it, put it away. He left the country, gave it to Chris, and it was sat in Chris's garage for a number of years. And then Chris decided, you know what, I'll kind of donate it to Lee and maybe he can do something with it. Which was an interesting one for me because I love learning about stuff, but I never played with any of this before. And luckily, the guys at 3DXR had spent two days with those up there up here in the northeast here in England. Those guys are experts in this kind of stuff, a bit fixed wing UAVs, mapping technology, all that kind of goodness. And Ben up there kindly agreed to host me for a couple of days so that we could fix this thing and sort it out. So this video, what I'm going to do is go through the process of what we've done to get this thing flying and what we did to put modern flight control electronics in here. And also it's a kickoff for a lot of videos about big boys toys because the time I spent at 3DXR, every time I turned around, there was a new really funky piece of technology not necessarily for hobbyists as such, but blimey, they had some really cool stuff. So I will be making a number of videos over the coming months looking at that. And also Ben very kindly gave up an hour and we sat down and we did an audio interview that'll split into two parts where he talked about how he builds these things. So hopefully that'll be of interest to those of you that are looking at getting into a big multi-rotor or a big fixed wing UAV to do things like video or mapping. So now that's all out the way, let me talk about what this thing is. So this is how it arrived. Uh, it's a little bit sad looking. Again, you can still see all the muck on the props. Uh, didn't know the condition it was in. There were screws missing. Uh, the battery connectors were wrong. It really looked quite sad. It was covered in thick dust and some of the clips on the top were broken as well. So job one with this is to start actually stripping things off it because until we know what's damaged, then we won't know what we need to swap over. So I wanted to put a Pixhawk on this and the one I was gonna go with initially was the Pixhawk 4. This is the new one from Hollybro that we looked at recently. Sad thing is, unfortunately, the Pixhawk itself doesn't fit very well on the top of this particular model. I'll show you an image of that later. So we ended up putting a Pixhawk 2.1 in here instead. So here's the start of the strip. So the top's been taken off. And again, you can see there are things that aren't connected. There are wires, power wires that haven't got anything on the end. So what we decided to do was take everything out, strip it back to bare basics and double check that all the wires and everything in here was going to be okay. So with the top off and all the electronics pulled, that's what it looks like. So the top piece is removed. We can see that the power distribution board there is in the middle with two XT60 connectors and two big power connectors at the front that connect to that house brick sized 6S battery. And then under that cover, we have other connections that go out to the ESCs and motors. As you can see, the actual wire gauge isn't huge because they don't pull ridiculous amounts of current. They're low KV motors with very big props. So the next thing we did was to start pulling off the gimbal as well. I might put a new gimbal on this thing, uh, but I didn't want the additional weight. I wanted the initial flight test to be as light and as risk-free 
as we could possibly get it. So we started to get a pile of stuff that we'd taken off. So the flight controller, the gimbal stabilization bits and pieces, and all that stuff, including the LED indicator from the original flight controller and everything was in this pile. So once we had it all apart, removed everything that wasn't necessary, made sure that all the connections that were on it were good, then it was a case of trying to figure out what else was going to go back on the top. So the Pixhawk 4, as you can see, unfortunately is too big for this model with the separate door to board with the PWM outputs. The other thing at the point where we did this fix, the Pixhawk 4 firmware needed a little revision or two just to be solid for us to put our hands on our hearts and trust that it was going to be fine. So we ended up just putting on a Pixhawk 2.1. So with the clips replaced, everything checked, all the bearings on the motors, double checked and looking okay, checking the props, checking all of the screws were done up properly and taking everything off that we don't need, it's starting to look an awful lot neater and an awful lot happier. Next job for me then was to swap the battery tray around. By default, the battery sits on top of these rails that are slung underneath on vibration dampening mounts and then the gimbals underneath. As I've popped the gimbal off for the testing and for the fixing, I decided to swap it around so the battery was below that. Uh, two reasons for that. One, it lowers the central gravity, which will make it a little bit more stable for the initial test flight. And secondly, the way it's designed is that the battery is supposed to be towards the rear of the craft to offset the gimbal weight and the camera that's at the front. And there are struts inside the frame that won't let you put the battery right in the middle which is where it needs to be if you haven't got a gimbal on it so that's the two reasons why i did that a bit of a pain to do but it worked out okay then next job is to get ready for the pixhawk 2. now i've already done a series putting the pixhawk 2 into a fixed wing model so this one is an awful lot easier actually if you're going to put it into something like a multi-rotor making sure that you've got the right orientation. You can see the arrow in the bottom right hand corner. All we did before we actually plugged it in was connected it up to Mission Planner and install the latest Ardu Copter. Now all we did was follow the instructions as per this website. I'll put a link down below. So it's installing the software, going through the basic configuration bits and pieces. The only thing we couldn't do was calibrate the magnetometer and calibrate the radio and set up the mode. But in terms of all that prep, we could absolutely do it. The really great thing is, is that the counterclockwise and clockwise direction of the motors on a hex like this are for the DJI flight controllers is the same as Ardu Copter for a hex as well. So I didn't have to start taking arms off and swapping things around because the ESCs are a part of the motor assemblies at the end of each of these arms. So the way you reverse them is by really taking them off. So the next job was to make a little adapter lead for one of the XT60 connectors. Because of the currents flowing around this thing, um, there wasn't really a way for me to get the power module in between the battery and the power supply on it. So I'm not going to be able to use the current sensor, but I will be able to monitor the battery voltage. So I made a little connector that went from one of the XT60 connectors on top of the power distribution boards into the power module and then plugged that power module into the Pixhawk as well. The first cable that we connected was the one to RC in. That's going to be an S bus connection from an X8R that is stuck up towards the bottom of the frame to give us best reception. Now we've got all that done, then the next job is going to be to wire up all of the individual motors. So we created six leads of the right length and I plugged them into the Pixhawk and marked up the ends of the leads with a little silver Sharpie pen with the number that they were plugged into. Because what we have to do is plug them into a daughter board that's actually underneath the bottom plate, which is where all of the ESC connections are presented. So we just have to go as per the diagram and start putting it all together. And that's how the mapping works. So output one uh, for the Pixhawk software actually needs to plug into motor six and output two on the Pixhawk needs to plug into motor three. So the silver numbers are how the motors are wired up and presented and which position they're in on the GGR model itself. You'll notice that the front two motors have the red cowlings underneath the motors and also the red plastics at the base of the carbon fiber tube that holds it on as well. Now that's done we can plug in the power module and we can start buttoning things up. Uh, plug in the GPS. We offset the GPS and offset the top plate a little bit so it would sit on top of the Pixhawk 2.1 and we are getting pretty close to flying now. 
then installed a telemetry radio so that we could do all the setup in the field without having a really long USB cable. And here at the back, you can see everything connected. The only other thing we did was plug in auxiliary one into the gear connection to operate the retractable landing gear from the PIX hook directly. So last job was to just double check that all the screws were fine. Uh, the arms were a little bit floppy, so uh, Ben prefers to have them st a little bit stiffer. So if something does happen, they don't immediately just flop down and uh, hit the ground. So once that's done, there's a couple of last jobs. So powered it up in the office and then he connected it over the telemetry radio and using Mission Planner, he did a couple of things. He calibrated the radio and we made sure that all of the flight modes that I needed, I was gonna you have stabilized to take off in, I was gonna have loiter so it could sit in the air and I was also gonna have return to home. So in the event of a problem, I could at least try and get the blooming thing to land. He also did the compass calibration in the office just to make sure that all worked and it worked great. But we're going to have to redo that out at the field because we're inside an office and there's lots of electromagnetic interference that's going to make the compass calibration a little bit out. Last thing he did was actually go through each of the motors and just spin them up. Uh, but each of them were spun up and they were in the right corresponding location and they were also spinning in the right direction and it was the first time we could test whether or not the motors and ESCs had survived whatever crash and hardship this model had been through and everything seemed to work fine there was no problems no magic smoke uh, no horrible noises of bearings no particular problems they were spinning freely so the next thing to do then was to go to the field and to try a flight so we got to the flight set up the mission planner laptop with the telemetry radio connected up to the model and then went through the process of doing the compass calibration that took a little bit of time it takes a bit a bit longer with the pixel 2.1 you have to be prepared to do the dance for quite a while so a big thank you to ben for doing this for me on camera and then once that was done we were pretty much ready so press the safety switch on the gps and arm the model by holding the throttle to the lowest position and the yaw to the right hand side get the confirmation beep and once it beeps then apply the throttle and up we go and it flies fantastic so at the moment we don't have a gimbal or anything else but with the reduced weight i should be getting about 15 minutes out of this battery with this particular frame it's going to need an auto tune uh, it's very very sloppy um so going through the auto tune process again that's fantastically covered in the arducopter wiki pages i'll put a link in the description i also have an auto tune video um, but it's flying really good and a quick check of the landing gear it's a retracting and dropping as well and Ben was very good and actually also set it up so in the event of a return to home it also dropped the landing gear as well to make sure that when it came into land at the end of an RTH sequence which we'll do at the end of this little flight it dropped the gear and then descended and stopped on top of it this was a surprisingly easy build to do the Pixhawk 2.1 was pretty straightforward to set up and just plugging it in and getting it all working was a lot less complicated than I expected. Compared to a plane setup, doing a multi-rotor is just a case of making sure that you've plugged the motors into the right outputs and you've also got the motors turning in the right direction. So all in all, although we were both working on it at the same time, uh, with Ben doing things like the Pixhawk setup and I was doing things like stripping the frame uh, and prepping things and doing some mods, we probably all up only took us two two and a half hours between us to take it from the sorry machine that came in at the beginning of the process to a machine that now flies with modern flight controller and electronics so if you have any questions about this pop them down below and stay tuned for some other big boys toys that i'll be posting about as well as those couple of audio interviews that i'll put up as youtube videos with pictures behind to illustrate what we're talking about where Ben very kindly shared some of his secret source about how he would build this thing from scratch and what modern large multi-rotors and fixed wing UAVs actually need and what he thinks about when he's building large modern multi-rotors and fixed wing UAVs for either film work or surveying or any of those kind of uses. 
If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.